Welcome back to another tabletop review. Today we'll look at the Walther PK380 semi-automatic pistol. I'll admit that times have been hard for those of us that like to buy used guns at bargain prices. I'd have to say that three quarters of all my guns have been used guns that I've come across with prices that were hard to pass up. That's become increasingly more challenging this past year. Just finding ammo, let alone at higher prices has been frustrating to say the least, but my search for good used guns that appeal to me has been a little more challenging than finding a box of 380 or 45 ammo. So much so that I've actually skipped scanning the sparse display cases most of the time that I've stopped it at my local gun stores to search for ammo. Last week I was surprised to see this Walter PK380 in one of my better stores for ammo and used guns. I like Walters. I've got a PPK, a PPK-22, a CCP, and a PPQ Navy. They're all excellent firearms. I believe the Walther firearms are underappreciated and undermarketed in the U.S., but that usually means I can get a quality gun at a reasonable price, especially if it's used. A quick check on the internet showed this gun selling new for about $425, where it was still actually available. The lowest used price I saw was about $250. With shipping, charge card fees, FFL fee, I'd be looking at about $310 at, at least. This one had a price tag of $279, and because it didn't have its manual, uh, they said they would sell it to me for $269. I thought that was a pretty good price. Let's make sure this gun is cleared first. The claim to fame for the Walther PK380 is its very soft recoil and easy to rack slide. In that regard, it indeed provides a good self-defense option for those with smaller or weaker hands, the physically less able to handle the typical semi-automatic handgun. Even, Even the, the magazine, magazine is easy to load. The gun is also fairly light. It lends itself to easy carry as well. Now we might as well acknowledge that every design includes compromises, keeping in mind that the PK380 was specifically designed to meet the needs of those requiring an easier to carry, handle, and shoot firearm. It shouldn't surprise you then that on the internet, that women tend to prefer this gun more than men. In perspective, that would mean that the Walther PK380 is a successful design, even though it may not appeal to everyone. As for packaging, this PK380 came in a basic hard plastic case. It came with only one 8 round magazine. There's a tool here for breakdown and of course the lock. As I mentioned earlier mine didn't have a manual but I easily could print one out off the internet no problem. As for background I've covered the Walter Arms Company in some depth in my previous videos so I'll just say that the Walter Company is a German weapons manufacturer that has been manufacturing firearms at its facility in Germany for more than 100 years. Walther is well known as a manufacturer of the famous PPK of the 007 spy movie fame. And in uh, 1997, Walther produced the P99, a polymer pistol that actually replaced Bond's PPK for a time. With excellent ergonomics, well-established reliability, and the ambidextrous controls, Walther has succeeded with the P99 to easily surpass the Glock benchmark. In 2002, the Walther P99 led to the development of the successful Walther P22, a somewhat smaller 22 long rifle target pistol. Based upon the P22 design, in 2009, Walther began production of a 380 variation, and so we have the PK380. While the guns look very similar, there are obvious differences. Both have slide-mounted ambidextrous manual hammer block non-decocting safeties and an external hammer. The magazine release is also ambidextrous using the Walter style paddle release on the base of the trigger guard. Note that the PK380 has no slide release lever. You've got to pull back on the slide and release it to chamber it the first round. After the last round has been fired, the slide locks back. The magazine has to be dropped slightly or completely removed and the slide pulled rearward and released to release the slide. 
The Walter PK380 is still produced in Germany today and it's distributed by Walter Arms of Fort Smith, Arizona. As for specifications, the PK380 is obviously a 380 caliber. Lock breech short recoil design is the action. Magazine capacity is 8 plus 1. Sights are 3 dot low profile polymer. The rear sight is driftable for adjusting for windage. Barrel length is 3.66 inches and it's a stainless steel barrel. Has a Cerakoting finish. Overall length is 6.1 inches. Width is 1.2 inches. Height is 5.2 inches. The frame is polymer with a Picatinny rail on the underside. As for the grips, there are no modifications available. Slide release, uh, there's none. The uh, serrations are on the rear of the slide. Mag release is this paddle arrangement right underneath the trigger guard. It has a loaded chamber indicator right here. Unloaded weight is about 19 ounces, so it's very light. My overall range experiences with the Walter PK380 have been pretty good. Because I have larger hands, though, the uh, Walter PK380 grips are just a little on the edge of being too small. But with the magazine extension, the grips are actually okay. I'd like more texturing on the grips if I were going to carry this gun, but for the range, uh, these seem fine. You can get a set of Talon grips for about $20 or uh, CDS tactical grips for about $17 if this is an issue. Sorry, no hold grips uh, for the PK380. The magazine is well made. Personally, I like the European paddle mag release. That's just my opinion. I just think it's kind of kind of neat, actually. Loading the magazine was very easy. This is probably the easiest 380 magazine for loading that I've ever seen. It's a very, very light spring. The spring tension is so light that I didn't even feel the need for my Uplula loader. I think this is a big plus. The women in my family uh, actually agree on that issue. Same goes for the slide action. This is a very, very easy slide. It's probably even lighter than my uh, SIG P238, which is very light. I found that the safety location actually allows me a firmer grip on the slide. Uh, pull the hammer back and it takes very little to rack the slide. Even with the hammer down, it's still very smooth and light. This is a practical plus in my opinion. Again, the women in my family agree. My daughter likes it better than the uh, SIG P238 because the PK380 was larger for a better grip, yet about the same weight. As for the PK380's trigger, this gun can be fired in double action or single action. In double action mode, the trigger pull is rated at about 11 pounds. This one seems a little lighter than that. The pull is long but very smooth with a solid break. In single action mode, trigger is rated at 4 pounds. Reset is short and crisp. This is a Walther, uh, so it's expected to have a good trigger, and this little gun doesn't let you down there. No slide release, which I find annoying, but I can tell you that for many, that just want a gun that they can handle. Uh, lack of a slide release is not really a problem. On the other hand, the safety can be a plus or a minus, depending on the individual. My wife hates safeties, so as great as this gun might be, it's an uphill battle to win her approval. I'm used to dealing with the safety, so I'm okay with it. The sights are three dot white that allow for quick target acquisition. Shooting the Walther PK380 is surprisingly easy and comfortable. The PK380 employs a Browning style tilt barrel design referred to as a lock breech short recoil design. The result is that the recoil is very light. This doesn't just make the gun more comfortable to shoot, it also assists in quick target reacquisition. The accuracy of this gun is really good. Maintaining a tight spread at 15 yards takes no effort, even during rapid fire. 
Due to an ammo shortage, I could only test out Winchester Full Metal Jacket 95 grain and Federal Ultra Target and Range 95 grain ammo, but this PK380 cycled through all 200 rounds I'd taken to the range without a single problem. Well, let's cover some of the cons. As you might recall, there was a takedown tool provided. Whenever there's a need for an additional tool needed to deal with a gun, I'm turned off. What the takedown tool does could easily be accomplished with the addition of a built-in lever. I admit, I don't understand Walther's logic in this issue. By the way, tweezers or a tire valve tool from an auto parts place would work in place of this tool if you ever lost it. And the gun comes with only one magazine. Now, that's too bad, but Mag Warehouse has them for about $24 each. The recoil spring offers also some challenges on reassembly, but a capture spring is available for about $25, which would solve that problem. Some will object to the safety, but it works. It's simple in that the trigger can be pulled and the hammer drop, but the safety blocks the hammer so the gun won't fire. No magazine disconnect. The lack of a slide release is more a nuisance than a con, but still. My daughter agrees with me on that issue. My wife doesn't really care. The fact that the grips are what they are is also somewhat uh, disappointing. The only other issue uh, is that the gun doesn't feel like a typical Walther. Compared to my single stack 9mm Walther CCP, which is almost identical in size, the PK380 feels just a bit less robust in its construction. Here's my CCP. As you can see, these two guns are very, very similar in their size and in their design. The Walter PK380 isn't bad. Uh, there's a slight rattle in the slide. All that being said, none of this is really a deal breaker for me. As for the money and for the overall operation, I'll admit I do like this gun. Now, as for pros, certainly the excellent Walther trigger and its double action, single action format is very practical for some people to feel safe carrying this gun. This trigger has an exceptional short, fast reset. The trigger is really great. I like it. It may be the best trigger in any of my 380s. I actually like the size of this gun. Like my CCP, I think the size is great for realistic and comfortable carry and concealment. Okay, it's not a pocket gun, which is my preferred mode of carry. In fact, it's actually larger than a Glock 43, but still, it's a good size for comfortable carry. And it's light, five ounces lighter than the Walter CCP, yet its weight feels good in the hand. I like the Picatinny rail. You can attach a laser or a tactical light combo if you've got a, you know, an idea that you want to create a good home defense weapon. This would be a good one. The sights are good. I actually like the European mag release. The Walter PK380 recoil is so light, the racking of the slide so easy, and even loading the magazine so easy. You've got to love this gun for how easy it is to handle. Taking the perspective, it's really, really good. By the way, Walter customer service is also excellent. The Walter PK380 comes in an assortment of colors. It can be had with a factory laser, and of course, a laser or a laser tactical light combo can be added. And there's a good assortment of aftermarket accessories available for the PK380. And finally, I think it actually looks pretty good. As for disassembly, in spite of the need for the special takedown tool, this assembly is really not all that difficult. I'm going to remove the magazine. I'm going to uh, drop the hammer, insert the tool into this little hole here, turn it counterclockwise until it stops, and then I can pull down on these release levers here, and the barrel just slide, uh, just uh, slide off, and. 
this assembly of the spring and rod carefully. You remove it. It is under a lot of tension and it's uh, pretty strong. And then of course we can remove the, uh, the barrel. And that's pretty much it. Reassembly is basically the opposite of disassembly. Uh, I'm going to re reinsert the barrel into the slide. Uh, the, the biggest big challenge is in uh, returning the uh, rod in the spring to the slide and the barrel assembly. The problem is that this, uh, this spring is under a lot of tension and it's quite long and it has to be gathered down onto the rod in order to be inserted in there and of course it's under all this pressure. So getting it in there and lined up is more difficult than a lot of people are comfortable with. The other thing you'll notice that this, uh, this rod is not seated properly against this little area right here. In fact, it has to be brought up into that little slot, that little notch. And in order to get it there, sometimes you have to kind of work with it a little bit. Once it's in, it'll sort of snap into place. And there it is, okay? And it's lined up. If it's not in there properly, it won't return to the, uh, to the, to the frame properly. All right, the slide then is just returned to the frame. And this little mechanism here can be brought back up into place. And then this uh, unit here can be turned clockwise and removed. And there we are. The suggested retail on the PK380 is about $500, but I saw sales for as low as $425 where the gun was still actually available today. And that's a point I wanted to stress here. This gun can still be found out there, at least as of today, and at a reasonable price for today's market. Use, as I mentioned earlier in this video, they were about $275. Well. To summarize, there are a few makes of guns out there that I just plain like. If you've watched many of my videos, you already know that. So you already know that Walther's is one of those. My Walther PPKs and the CCP are excellent, and I think my Walther PPQ M2 Navy is just downright outstanding. Absolutely one of the top shooters I own. The Walther P22, PPS, and 05 Match are still on my wish list. So, how did the PPK380 do? Well, it's not my favorite, of course, but uh, it's got a heck of a trigger. The additional tool needed for takedown is a bit silly, given that even I can come up with a simple design solution to eliminate its need. And the lack of a slide release leaves me feeling that the gun is somewhat incomplete. Learning how to drop the hammer from, uh, safely from the cock position could offer a challenge for a few people. The grips are thin for my hands and lack the feel of those on the similar CCP, which causes me to wonder why. And for a gun design for ease of handling, the loose recoil spring guarantees frustration on reassembly for average people. In spite of all that, I can't help it. I really do like this gun. I like its ease of operation and the double single action trigger operation for practical and safe carry. So remember what I said about Walther's intent in the design of the PK380. I love the way big guys will say that there's hardly any recoil on a gun and the woman next to him will complain about the recoil on the same gun. This gun was not designed for big guys or for the experienced shooter for that matter. So if taken in perspective, it's a heck of a gun. This is one of the easiest guns I've ever handled uh, to load and to rack and the women in my family agree. On top of that, it's easy to carry, draw, aim, shoot, and hit your target. At the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about? Any weapon you carry is better than the one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe.